Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And my big news this week is the grandbaby was born late last night. If I have permission from the parents, I'll put up a photo here so you guys can see because she's so cute. Moving on into book writer things for the book wrap up. I finished These Prisoning Hills by Christopher Rowe. So this is a novella set in Tennessee, Kentucky area in a future earth. So this is a dystopia, but we're at the after portions of it. There has been an AI war and these huge, they call them Commodores or Mech I'm going to call them Mechas, that was mostly defeated as far as they know. And the main character, Marsha, is just working in her county and some federal soldiers come. And she gets tasked to be a guide because they've lost a division of soldiers and she goes with them. And that's really all I can say without giving them spoilers. This is told in an alternating timeline, so you get to see Marsha's past when she was a federal soldier fighting in the war, and then currently with what is going on. And the two timelines do tie in together, like they bring the same plot points home. So as she confronts something in her main timeline, you get the flashback of why that is significant. And I thought it was an interesting style to do that type of story, but I still kind of felt distant from the main character. After finishing this, I did find out that there are two short stories that come before, that are be set before this during the war from what I understand. And so I'm interested in going looking those up and seeing if that changes my opinion of this. Good story, interesting premise but it didn't resonate with me. However, if you like alternate, or if you like going back and forth in time period and dystopias, and it has a lot of like interesting science in this, or like how science has evolved based off of the situation, it is very interesting. And so I would say pick it up and read it. I then finished The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. This was my buzzword for July. Um, the prompt was something with the book thing and I figured a library was pretty on the nose for a book related word. And this is a, about a librarian from the Invisible Library. And the Invisible Library sits between the world alternates and they collect works of fiction. And it even br is brought up at one point in the book uh, character goes, wait, why don't you get the scientific treaties or political texts? And they're like, well, most worlds have the same science, scientific advances roughly about the same time. So we don't really need those. I mean, the laws of the universe are the same. What's different is the literature, the fiction. For example, they're looking for a grim text and there's they said that in each alternate, the Grimm brothers might have written different stories. And so that's why the fiction texts are more interesting to their library. And Irene, the librarian that is tasked with doing this, is also given an apprentice to go with her. It's her first one. It was kind of thrown on her, so she wasn't expecting an apprentice so soon. And hijinks ensue. And they're kind of in a world that is more described as steampunkish. It's not wholly steampunk because you have robots or cyborgs coming in and then you have the Fae with magic. So it's a very interesting setup of science fiction and fantasy. And this is the first in the series. I am definitely going to continue reading because I want to know what's happening. It was fun getting to see a character who has lots of answers but doesn't necessarily know everything since Irene is the one who knows most about the invisible library and things that are going on there. I really enjoyed this book as well. I then started Tiger Honor by Yoon Han Lee. This is a sequel to Dragon Pro. And this is following Seven, who is the son of Captain Juan from the first book. So if you haven't read the first book, that's, I'm 
as far as I'm going to mention him. And Seven is a tiger spirit. Just joined the Space Forces. It's what he's wanted to do. First day and hijinks are happening already. And you do get to see men. It's kind of fun to see what she's like from an outside perspective. Planning on finishing reading this this week. And then I have also started The Way Spring Arrives and other stories. This is a collection of science fiction and fantasy written in Chinese and then translated. Well, one of the stories was written in English, but it's from authors who are female or non-binary who normally write in Chinese. And I am buddy reading this with Kristen over at Kristen L. SFF Reader and Shannon over at That So Po. And it's been really good for me. It's been interesting since all three of us will approach a story very differently. And two of us might be like, yeah, we, we didn't get it. And then the third one's like, oh, and then shares what they got from it. And we're like, oh, okay. So there's been several stories after that. I go, you know what? I enjoy this story more now that I've seen somebody else's perspective. We're going to continue working on this. We're trying to get this completed before the holds are up. And after I finish those, I will continue working on my TBR for the new release-a-thon. And the magical readathon, but new release a thon first. Which means I probably will just pick up whichever book is due back at the library first. For my writing wrap up, I was recharging uh, for the mo beginning of the week. I decided the week before that I wanted to go back to a story that I've been working on and kind of do a rewrite of it. I wrote it, it I call it my Diana story. The secondary character is Diana. I was playing around and made the main character Rachel. And that confuses some people, or it confuses my beta readers sometimes. So I call it the Diana story. And this is the following Rachel. She is a courier who is traveling through a forest and meets a woman named Diana. They have some interactions throughout the forest. The interactions are odd, but Rachel's trying to stay focused on her mission at hand, or at her job at hand, and not get distracted and Diana is a distraction. So that's kind of the gist of it. I started writing this as a short story concept. I was following, it was an old writing excuses homework using the Milou, the, no, using the mice quotient that Mary Robinette Koal shares where you have different things. So you have like Milou character event, and I'm forgetting what the other one is, but my, my character's conflict or so the story was set up where she enters the forest and she leaves the forest and that's the story and then I built everything else around that so I wrote the short story and was like mm, I kind of like the elements in this and then I was like maybe I can make it a novella and I expanded it and then after a conversation with my sister she says you could actually expand this to a novel if you wanted to so I am going back to the drawing board and kind of looking at it again I wasn't happy with the beginning anyway I like how the ending ends, but I feel like there's definitely like a shift when you get to the ending part and that the beginning hasn't set up the ending very well. So I'm reworking the beginning and I've decided to start before Rachel enters the forest. So that's, I've been brainstorming on that, thinking about it. I like to think a lot before I start writing. And then I wrote that first scene where she gets the job. I've I kind of thought that that would be a good place to start. And so I have that first scene. I'm going to add one more scene and then I'm going to have her enter the forest and go from there and see how things change up. So I'm going to call it a successful writing week because I jumped back into editing a project, which is my farthest one along if I really want to one day get published. And then for other media, I was visiting my parents last Sunday and my we like watching PBS that I've grown I grew up watching PBS and so my dad had the TV on and they had a segment called like the power of sewage which was basically walking you through a sewage treatment plant and then talking about how the different elements of sewage and the cleanup of it can contribute to electricity or fertilizer and it was fascinating I really really enjoyed it if I can find a link to it 
like online, I'll put it down below. To me, I really kind of started thinking of the applications to a space station. Like what type of sewage treatment would they need? I know that the International Space Station has like a baby one. I know they recycle the urine, um, clean it up, kind of becomes water, joins the water stream anyway, which is very similar to what we have now. But I think for other waste that gets shipped back home, if I remember right, and so then learning how different people can have used waste, use their poop to create fertilizer was really fascinating. They showed it like how this treatment plant was doing it. And then they also, and they also had a clip of someone who was just doing it naturally and had basically an outhouse. And again, it was just fascinating for me. Yeah. And then with the sewage plant, how they talked about, okay, we have these mechanical elements of it, and then we have like microbiology portions. I have a greater respect for the sewage workers in my area now, because yeah, I didn't realize there was so much science that went into it, honestly, and really has me rethinking my, the map that I kind of created for a space station for another project. And when people ask writers, where do you get your ideas? Everywhere. The answer is going to always be everywhere because, hi, everywhere contributes something. And you never know when you're going to find it. This has been my week 31 wrap up and we're in August. It's so hard to believe. And I just realized I didn't do my stats. So I guess we're going to do stats. Okay. So for the month of July, I my goal is eight books, but I only read seven. Nope. I only read six. <laughs> yep. That's six right there. Okay. So, and they were all novels. For my new releases, I actually read more than I had in previous months. I read three. So uh, that was August Kitko and the Mechas from Space, Hunt the Stars by Jesse Mihalik, and Valentina Salazar is Not a Monster Hunter, by Zoreta Cordova, which actually brought me up to seven new releases for the year, putting me back on track, which means that with this month of new release a thon, I'm going to be over my goal, hopefully. For my Goodreads reading goal, I started at 159 and I'm ending at 159. I haven't read anything from my list. I'm going to have to do something about that later this fall. And I don't think I have put anything on my list. Let me go verify that. I'm pretty sure I haven't put anything on my currently reading list because I've been pretty good about finishing it. Yep. Nope. Still at 159. For my physical TBR, I bought more books. Yay. Library sale. But some of the books I, I purchased, I have read before. For example, Oh, it's not up right there. It's further up because it's part of my TBR. The Rowan. I had that as a kid and got rid of it in my early, or in my mid-20s because I didn't have room for so many books. And I realized I really wanted it again. So when I purchased that, that doesn't go on my physical TBR because I've already read it. But I started July with 93 and I ended July with 104. So now I'm getting to the series contender of maybe needing to read 100 books before I buy more. We'll see. That's a that's something for another year though. We're just having fun collecting right now. Oh, I take that back. That should be 108. I ended with 108 because I forgot the graphic novels we purchased. All right. And then for my already started series, I started with 90 and 18 were caught up. I started three more, so I'm now at 93. And yeah, so I have 93 series to finish. 19 are caught up. Really good at starting things, if you haven't noticed. But those are my July stats. Thank you, and have a great day.